Nikhil is the founder and CEO of Game Eon Studio and uh, like us he is also working on creating a lot of exciting stuffs in Unreal Engine one of the major projects uh, that he has been working on is the Bombay Gullies and this project has been recognized globally by Unreal Engine as well and he have also received the Unreal Engine grant for the same so nikhil i would like you to talk more about this because it would be better like these to our students get to know what it is all about and what your journey was uh, uh, throughout the um, process of getting into unreal engine why you chose unreal engine just basic stuff around that over sure. to you sure uh, thanks thanks a lot krishna and uh, good evening everyone namaskaram uh, to each and every one of you guys uh so today we before we get started with our session i would like to give a small uh, introduction about myself so as uh, krishna mentioned my name is nikhil malankar i have been in this space for almost more than 10 years now in fact on 19th april uh, we finished our 10th year of uh, operations at gameo and uh, at gameo studios we've been doing quite a bit of work in the space uh, very recently we got heavily recognized because of our uh, work being done on uh, mumbai gullies which is an open world game based on the city of mumbai now uh, we are primarily making this game in unreal engine 5 uh, the reason uh, why we chose unreal engine as a software to make this game is primarily because a it has a uh, high graphics uh, so you know we were sure that we want to make sure uh, make a game that is very high on graphics uh, secondly uh, it also has tools that can actually speed up your development process and get you up to speed with a lot of interesting elements so you know uh, some things that we will be uh, discussing today will be on level design so unreal engine has a very extensive framework uh, wherein you can actually uh, rapidly iterate and create uh, grand levels and uh, you can easily test them as well so gone are the days when you have to wait for long time or long rendering hours uh, if you have a system that uh, runs unreal engine smoothly then you can easily run any kind of a game uh, play that game and also understand what uh, makes it interesting to learn, uh, you know interesting to play as well uh, having said so uh, unreal engine is an extensive topic so i'm sure you all must have been going through your own learning curves as well if you have uh, any experience with unreal engine uh, on your level you will understand how easy it is to actually pick up and uh, of, of course i would agree that hardware requirements for running unreal engine are on the higher side uh, but uh, that is the primary differentiation between unreal engine and all the other engines out there in the market where an unreal engine has uh, you know set uh, made the stance clear that they want to focus on really high quality games uh, and these can either be your mobile titles or your pc titles as well we have seen uh, games being made in unreal engine that have been ported onto the mobile platform as well so it is not the case that unreal engine uh, helps you own, uh, create only pc or console games they also allow you to create smaller mobile titles having really high graphics so just a recent example if i were to give you raji uh, which is a very popular indian game was also uh, ported onto the mobile platform very recently and that is a game that was made in unreal engine so that's just a quick uh, you know run through about the overall landscape and uh, with that in mind like I, i would like to conclude my introduction and perhaps krishna can give you some highlights on what we will be learning today and, and that's when uh, we can start the session so krishna over to you yes perfect so it's been quite a journey from your end as well and we are like really happy and glad to have you because uh, uh, we are doing something in unreal engine but uh, the students have, have always been reluctant like what more can be done or what else does unreal engine have to offer and since you have been in this industry for quite some time coming a great thing for all these students because at the end we all want we are all working for the single vision on india to become the nation of creators and not just consumers we are all here motivating people or the youth to build their career in this uh, tech right So moving forward, uh, I'll just give you a brief about what we'll be covering. So we are today going to talk about level designing for creating gamified experiences in Unreal Engine. Uh, so we'll start with what the term Unreal Engine, uh, what lo- level designing is, the importance of it, and then there'll be a quick guide on learning level designing. So we uh, Nikhil will take us through the journey of level designing and the steps and processes. At the end, as we uh, near the end. have a live q and a session so wherein if any of you have any questions you can either ta- type that question in the chat box 
or just a new uh, feel free to unmute yourselves and ask it from anilinjit also since we are limited in time so we'll try to keep the uh, stay with the time that we have mentioned it is a one hour session so we'll uh, try to end it by 7:30 so we can start i believe uh, yep. is that fine nikhil yeah it works for me so uh, thanks thanks for krishna so uh, we'll get started so we have in total uh, four major topics to cover today first and foremost we will uh, learn about the term level design what is it exactly the second part is uh, we will understand uh, the importance of level design and how it impacts our end user experience and a third part will be a quick guide to level design we will walk you through a step by step process on how you can do so and the fourth would be some real life examples and real life applications on how you can actually implement your uh, thought process into a uh, game engine certainly we are uh, you know time bound so perhaps there is a possibility that uh, when i'm explaining one particular topic uh, some parts might get overflown so in the interest of time there might be uh, a possibility that we might not be able to cover q and a but still from my side i'll reserve the last uh, 15 minutes strictly for q and a and any theoretical uh, part that might get overflown we can we can cut through that and we can have that as an extended session later on so now uh, let's understand what is level design so uh, if you were to pl- uh, play any sort of game uh, be it a puzzle game or role playing game it is very enjoyable to, uh, to play because there has been a lot of thought process in the uh, in a process known as game design now what is game design game design is not nothing related to your typical art or your 2d art or 3d art game designing is essentially a systematic process uh, wherein you actually chart down what is the singular aspect of your particular game that will be make the game fun to play within game designing there uh, this is an umbrella term that covers a lot of other uh, core design aspects and one of those aspects is level design now to understand level design we have to understand a um, fundamental aspect saying that you know if uh, if at all the game is nature is endless or does it have a finite uh, end to it so within level design there are a lot of multiple aspects so first you have to decide what type of game you have to make and based on that you have to un- uh, understand what sort of mechanics will be incorporated in the game and how you can play around with those particular mechanics so just to explain this very simply take for example a game like subway surfers uh, subway surfers is an endless game now within that construct you have so many elements coming in front of you on the side and so many obstacles and collectibles so the role of a level designer is essentially to figure out where to put what elements uh this is now considering case of subway surfers you have a character that runs on the railway track and from front you have some trains in coming and on those trains you have collectibles so where exactly to place those collectibles how to place them uh, at what frequency the uh, train will be coming towards you and will it be actually fun to play figuring that piece uh, of puzzle out is what is level design let's take example of some other game as other game as well so let's take an example of a game like uh, uncharted for that matter so uncharted is a console and PC, uh, console game and recently they came out on the pc platform as well if you have uh, figured out like if you've played that game you must have figured out that they create levels in a way that without completing one particular level you cannot pro- possibly progress to the next stage and that is also one core principle of a level design uh and it differs from game to game there are there are no uh, set in stone principles or uh, for every kind of game each game has its own principles that they follow in order to make the game fun to play but you can kind of standardize the process uh, if you have identified what kind of game is it that you want to make so first and foremost it is very critical for you to actually document out uh, in the form of a proper game design document on what is it that your game is fun to play second part is majorly the art style uh, that is actually not really dependent on uh, your game design aspect that's a completely separate equation altogether but you can actually play around with your games art and level design a lot so that you can create some variations now within level design there are uh, multiple other con- uh, concepts as well so types of level designs if you were to ex- uh, you know understand there are broadly two types one is your manual level design wherein you as a game designer or a level designer will sit with the engine in this case unreal engine for that matter you will take a look at all the, uh, the uh, assets that you have under your project folder and you will start populating them within your games uh, scene for a uh, file 
and then place them uh, according to your best level of understanding of what is it that will look good to play and where to place them i would highly encourage you guys to take a look at uh, you know uh, game god of war and some videos on that uh, in fact i will pass on some links over here uh, right now uh, so there was a talk at uh, the gdc in san francisco last year uh, when they explored the level design of god of war game uh now in the chat i would just like take a, a small poll how many of you have played the game god of war any game god of war 3 god of war okay so jawar sam uh, has raised a hand so uh, i would highly recommend you all to take a look at this one video it's an it's an hour long video so do take a look at it at your own convenience because i think uh, from an understanding perspective it will be very helpful Uh, and whoever has played this game, they will again relate to the talk more because it talks about all the nitty gritties that are in the game. Uh, in fact, if you were to look at uh, you know uh, the principles of level design, uh, when a game is under development, it doesn't look anywhere close to what it looks in the final build. So, an iterative process is essentially figuring it out on what you have to achieve first, and then uh, you know placing those blocks. and step by step uh, working through all your uh, levels working through all the assets that you have mix and match them it is next to impossible for you to figure out on day one on what is um, actually fun to play so as i said level design is an iterative process you can figure out the kind of game that you are trying to make and then within the construct of the assets that you have you can start populating them uh and based on the your end goal you can you know come up with solutions to actually structure them out as you wish uh in case of a game like uh, uncharted or even god of war wherein you are restricted by certain puzzle blocks or certain uh, you know obstacles you have to work with assets smartly so that you are not breaking the illusion of the game see uh, at the end of the day every game is a piece of illusion right uh, when you are kind of uh, immersed yourself into the world of a game you have to consider all the aspects and you have to make sure that the player does not lose track of the world that they are in so anything and everything that you are placing inside a level should never feel out of the uh, uh, world for the particular player so say for example if you are making a medieval game right you cannot have a medieval game having maybe a, a, a auto rickshaw or maybe something that is out of the place from that particular uh, time period right so like that you have to work closely within the game's theme uh, and play certain assets that will make sense to be put over there uh, in terms of restriction or uh, restricting the player there are tons of ways to do it uh, so you know if you if you have an open world game uh, with, with the likes of grand theft auto 5 the way that grand theft auto 5 restricts the entire map is if you reach towards the end of the sea uh, your character gets uh, you know reversed and they kind of start moving in the other direction same thing with watch dogs uh, watch dogs 2 as well they did the same thing if you uh, go towards the very end you get turned around and then that's how you uh, they kind of keep you yourself immersed into that experience uh another set of experience uh, in terms of level design can be progressive level design when you actually uh you know restrict the player into certain area and you keep on opening the map later on so this was a classic example uh, for grand theft auto vice city where they restricted you in a certain area in fact grand theft auto vice city and grand theft auto san andreas as well they restrict you into, into a certain area and if you uh, by some reason somehow you kind of uh, you know uh, go ahead and escape out of that area uh there are cops behind you so you can uh, and that becomes very much be- believable for the player it is no- nowhere out of the view that you know you cannot do this or this something out of the ordinary that happened it is very much believable and they have created a construct a storyline saying that uh beyond a certain area there is a storm going on so you're not allowed to go there and if you go there then there are there's like a five star wanted level that uh, chases you throughout the game and then you cannot possibly survive in that particular area without entering any sort of cheat codes so uh, that is majorly all uh, you know things about level design and uh, there are as i said there are various different types of level designs as well uh, there are endless games uh, wherein you do not have any end to the levels uh, but within that construct as well there are certain formulas that you can work together with in order to make sure that you are still maintaining that kind of experience for the player and at the same time you are adding levels of complexity so 
there are two different types of games one is your finite game and the second one is your infinite game uh, this can be your endless runner or a procedurally generated map or a game like no man's sky where you know the game doesn't literally doesn't have any kind of uh, end so uh, it depends on the choice of game that you are making and within this choice you have to kind of also understand how it impacts your end user experience now that we have understood broadly what uh, the term level design means we will now come towards the part of uh, the importance of level design uh now having a very good level design is extremely important uh, just because you know uh, if you have to make sure that the user is always engaged with your game and they keep on coming back to your game no matter what and we talked about open world games we talked about you know these narrative based elements we talked about endless tunnels and all but even from a perspective of a simple puzzle game uh, something like a 2048 or even a ludo for that matter requires you to have that kind of level designing uh, so that you keep the user hooked as well now you might wonder what what kind of additional level design would you require in uh, possibly in a game like a 2048 or a uh, or a ludo type game right uh, that's because the level design of these games is predetermined uh, and accepted widely by everyone so you do not really need to work around or conceptualize that level design but by default primarily those games already have their uh, their level design set because you are dealing with only a singular level and within that level they have uh, their set of mechanics set um, but uh, having said so within these constructs within these bounds you can play around with these uh, values you can actually shift the game or concept all together and turn it around into a completely different game uh, i'll give an example uh, so while we have 2048 as a number based game uh, when you have to match two numbers and they become another number the same concept uh, was used by multiple different game developers and turned and spilled off into a kind of game wherein you could actually merge buildings and iteratively make bigger buildings and those buildings can then be merged to make even more bigger buildings so that is uh, something that has uh, you know a part of the game designing and along with that a little bit of knowledge and application of level design on what to show where uh, that is also very important uh, now how does it impact the end user experience drastically because if you do not pay attention to what you are putting inside a level it might either become way too easy for the player to play and thereby the user will lose uh, their interest or it might become incrementally uh, difficult for the player to play uh, which might you know where the player might end up losing their overall interest in playing your game so you have to make sure that you are maintaining the right balance uh, in order to make sure that your level progression is very simple and clear and it either follows a linear path or it follows a path wherein you have a curve wherein you grow in terms of complexity and then you give a easy level then again you grow in terms of complexity and then you again give an easy level uh one of the best examples for level design is uh, a game that we all know some of us uh, hate it some of us love it some of us can't get rid of it some of us can't get uh, you know our 60 year old grandma to get rid of uh, uh, playing that game the game uh, that i'm talking about and referring to is candy crush uh, candy crush has perhaps one of the best game design uh, level designs uh, so to speak because uh we know at least one or the other friend who is stuck on that 432nd level and uh, you know he's trying to or he or she is trying to get through that level severely and once they get past it they then uh, you know again get stuck on maybe like the 459th level or so so i think uh you are know, playing wide variety of games will give you an understanding of what is it uh, and how you can kind of you know tweak these things to have a better user experience and within these uh, level design uh, uh, elements you also have to figure out what are the rewarding hooks for the player so uh, as i said you have to plan your levels in a way such that uh, they are not too easy to go through and if they are very easy to go through then towards the middle of it or towards the uh, early progression you have to create some sort of a steep level wherein the uh, the user is kind of uh, rising the ladder very quickly and then you kind of uh, make them stall for a while and just when they are about to give up uh, you help them clear that level uh some more concepts about level designing can also be extended to all these other various games as well uh, i think uh, uh, rubber banding ai ai can also be utilized to actually create some really good uh, level designs uh, so say for example you have a racing game that you created uh, and there are 
you know ai enemies that you are racing against um, take for example a game like need for speed so you start at point a and you end at point b or it, it might be either a sprint uh, level or it might be a, a circuit level uh, what happens typically in a racing game is they create the, their ai uh, wherein they follow the principles of rubber banding logic what is rubber banding logic essentially uh, when you are be ahead in front of an uh, uh, your opponent ai uh, the opponent ai catches up with you very quickly uh, almost at unnatural speeds that you personally as a player can never even achieve so this is an unfair uh, yet uh, unfair practice yet a fun gameplay wise element uh, and hack that game developers have figured out that this is actually fun and competitive for the player to play uh, and on the flip side if you are going very slow then the ai that is way ahead of you will gradually decrease the speed so that you as a player can catch up so these very simple principles in level design can help you create a very rich user experience wherein as i said uh, i'm really again reiterating on, uh, on the fact that uh, you know you do not have to make the game extremely easy for the player to play neither you have to make the uh, game extremely hard so that the user gives up uh, hope in playing the game uh Uh, and in terms of level design you, you can at times make the game frustrating as well there are games that are extremely frustrating and having like very really tight level design and yet people come and play these games some of the examples that i can give was one classic example that almost everyone uh, loved and hated at the same time was this game called flappy bird back in 2013 or 2014 now that game was extremely frustrating to play probably in the initial first few uh, months I, i think almost a year people didn't even pay attention to the game because it wasn't in the top charts or anything and one fine day a very popular youtuber pewdiepie played the game and it just went viral all over so chances of a game having a very tough level design being successful are also there but they are very minimal but at the same time uh, you have to make sure that there is still a chance for a player to actually get through that tough level design as well So while I gave an example of uh, Flappy Bird, that is a very binary example, but I think some more examples can also be explored. Uh, I think perhaps uh, one of the best examples of uh, very tough level designs can be the Dark Souls series or even this game called Sekiro. And here I will take a moment to actually read some chat and uh, also understand from you uh, on what you guys think are some really difficult level designs in games. so please feel free to write down your uh, you know thoughts in the chat what is a game that you find extremely difficult to get through so gorov sud has mentioned elden ring and uh, yeah uh, although i haven't played elden ring yet uh, so i think it will be too difficult for me to comment on that but certainly i've heard a lot of good praises street chaser okay contra yeah contra i think uh, the older games also had some very tight level designs and what i really liked about the older games was that they had a lot of replay value like nowadays we see so many games coming out in the market and uh, you know somewhere down the line their replay value gets uh, lost but i think uh, the older games like your mario contra uh, or all these other nes titles they had tons of replay value and uh, rahul garg has mentioned uh, one of the most frustrating missions in perhaps the gaming history that is the helicopter mission in gta vice city so i think that mission was one of the most frustrating uh, missions in the game uh, but that also serves as a very good example of how the game was balanced like you reach to that helicopter mission and before that all, all the missions that you've gone through are relatively easy to complete but when you come to that one mission that frustrating helicopter mission you are so frustrated with the game that you either want to just give up the game and just keep on exploring the city or you want to somehow you know get through that mission and uh, then see what happens further on so i think grand theft auto vice city has nailed the entire level design very well they have this huge open world uh, environment and within that open world environment they place these checkpoints that you can visit and once you visit those checkpoints then a particular mission gets triggered so that is also a very carefully thought through level design although it is an open world game but still there are you know these pointers that they have kind of come up with which guide the player properly where the player should 
flight school mission in San Andreas, certainly that was also difficult. Uh, need for speed, uh, for sure. I think some of the uh, uh, you know opponents were very difficult to crack. Call of Duty also has some very good level designs. In fact, Call of Duty, if you look at the modern titles, they are so well made that there is, uh, you know, you if you observe those things very well, uh, you'll find out that every single block that is placed, even if you find a garbage bin that is placed in a particular area, there has been a lot of thought that goes behind placing that garbage bin exactly where it is placed. So certainly there, there is a lot of science behind level design as well. In fact, the developers of Candy Crush have a proper scientists uh, who they consult, you know, psychological scientists who can who they kind of consult in terms of uh, making sure that they come up with the right set of level designs. A very good level design needs to have tons of hooks, as I mentioned, and these hooks can be either psychological or even haptic hooks. Uh, when mobile games started coming into the market, there were a lot of haptic feedback. Now, what is haptic feedback? It is essentially your vibrations that uh, game developers started playing. In fact, even in your PlayStation nowadays, your controller uh, has uh, you know vibration elements that give you a haptic feedback of what is happening inside a particular level. So, if you guys have played anything on the PlayStation 5 or 4 uh, and you have held the controller, you get these vibration feedbacks, which makes the game much more immersive to play. So while you're planning level design, it is also critical for you to consider not only what is happening inside the game, but how that level is actually playing with the player's psychology. So that is something that you have to very much keep in mind. So say, for example, if you're driving a car and the car crashes, so your vibrate, uh, your controller should vibrate according to that frequency so that it sends out a message to the player that yes, they are indeed immersed in that particular. So having said so, I think uh, that was majorly uh, some bit about the importance of level design and how it impacts uh, our end user experience. Now let us come to a quick guide uh, to level designing. Uh, before that, uh, I think there are some very interesting games mentioned over here. I would uh, highly recommend you all to uh, uh, you know, go through these particular uh, uh, games that have been mentioned in the chat and just go ahead and Google or YouTube uh, the videos on these games. If at all you are not able to buy these games outright, I would highly recommend. I think these are some very good examples that have come up over here. Personally, Devil May Cry is a very good example of a very tough game. And uh, certainly the Dark Souls series is also something uh, very, very interesting. And definitely give a, give the God of War level design part a look because that covers a lot of interesting aspects about uh, overall uh, you know, concept of level design. And you might be able to pick up a lot of things from there as well. Which, yes, certainly Halo game as well has had a very good uh, level design. Now, uh, let's move on to a quick guide to level designing. Uh, since we are very short on time, you know, it will be difficult for me to come up with a proper uh, process on Unreal Engine, but I can certainly uh, you know, guide you through a step-by-step -step process theoretically on uh, how the overall flow goes. So first and foremost, uh, whenever you come up with a game uh, idea, the first step in that particular process is you have to come up with a game design document, uh, which is widely popularly known as GDD. Uh, what is a part of uh, and yeah, Abhijit over here has mentioned a very interesting game called Getting Over It, uh, which is also interestingly extremely difficult to play. But as I mentioned earlier, it had support from uh, the YouTube community, which kind of made it more frustrating and uh, frustrating to watch and even more frustrating to play, and thereby entertainment for everyone. Now, coming to uh, you know, how can you approach level design? It's uh, simple and at the same time extremely complicated as well. Uh, simple and complicated because coming up with level design is very easy. I mean, anyone can come up with a level design. But is that level design actually fun to play? Uh, how many people will get frustrated and at what time people will start losing interest? That is something that you need to iteratively plan. So here's the process. You first start out with your game design document. Uh, you chart out what are, uh, are the different types of assets that you need for a game. You list them down uh, one by one. Uh, okay, this is a character. The character will have maybe a gun in his hand, uh, and within that, uh, you know, we'll create an environment that will have X number of buildings, and within those buildings, we will have some drop items. 
Uh, so list down all the assets that you can possibly think of that will be a part of your team. Then take a very basic uh, grayscale area. Uh, okay, a grayscale area means basically just start off your Unreal Engine or start off any engine that you have. Populate all of your assets inside a particular folder. Come up with your unique gameplay mechanics. And once you have those in place, you start uh, testing all these modules uh, simultaneously, uh, individually. So, say for example, a game like God of War, and this is something that is extremely uh, you know, uh, mentioned in the talk as well, at the GDC talk that I just shared. So, you have to uh, come up with all those singular mechanics. So, say for example, if your character is walking, that module will be developed separately. Uh, then say for example your character can drive a car so how does that car drive that will be developed simultaneously in a separate uh, particular model then there will be a phase wherein both of these modules are ready you have to now bring them together inside a particular gray box level and then start testing them so you get this together and you give it in the hands of a level designer now the ro job role of a level designer is very straightforward the level designer, he or she, will take these elements that are passed on to them from the development team. Uh, development team meaning, I'm combining art and programming into one development team. They will pass on this these assets to the level designer along with uh, open values. Okay. So, say for example, if, if there is a car inside a game, right? The level designer will get that car with exposed values that will allow him to uh, change the acceleration, the speed, the top speed and the minimum speed on the fly uh, and doing that they will continuously test that particular level uh, till the point of time they find it fun to play. Uh, now how will they determine is it uh, fun to play or not? They kind of work together with a close set of testers or even community people like you can, you can very well uh, you know involve some people who are not a part of the development team to actually give you feedback. But essentially, the way that a level design is done is primarily uh, by having charted out first on paper what is it that you need to do and then having a ready list of assets of all the elements that are a part of your particular game. Once these happen, then all you need to do is essentially just stitch them together and make the world believable. So say for example, if today we were given a game like Uncharted to me, Okay, and you have to create one particular level inside the game of Uncharted. Now, in a game like Uncharted, you will have so many different assets to work with. You have rocks, you have uh, your gameplay mechanics, you have your uh, Nathan Drake as your central character, you have other characters as well. So you will take a particular level, yeah, perhaps in Unreal Engine, you will start picking those blocks, placing them inside the level. And then as a character, you will start playing the game into a simulation mode or a play mode and you'll see what is it uh, that is making the game fun to play. Uh, some examples over here, some articles that I'll also pass on over here uh, is something that will be a very interesting read for you guys. I'll pass on 10 uh, video games with best level design. This, this is article on the gamer.com. I would highly encourage you all to go and uh, take a look at it. And there are some very exciting uh, games over here mentioned. Uh, so, you know, there are games like The Last of Us, uh, Hollow Knight, then there's Sonic Mania, Elden Ring, uh, Rayman Legends, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This is also a very interesting game on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, then there's Crash Bandicoot, uh, Dishonored 2, Super Mario Odyssey and Dark Souls. So certainly like there are uh, more classic examples of some uh, very good level designs inside the game. But typically a step-by-step -step process if I were to iterate to you is first you come up with a game design. Second, within that game design, you uh, write down all the assets that are a part of your game. Uh, within those uh, assets, you get them developed by a developer. Uh, then the developer passes it on to the level designer. Then it is the level designer's job to create that particular level. Uh, how they do it? They rely on exposed values from the developer's end. So as I mentioned, if it's a car racing game, they will get a car with all the values that are exposed on the side in the inspector panel side. Uh, you will get all these values so that they can tweak around and you know check the game. Uh, sometimes level designers also get access to procedural generated code, uh, which basically means that if they want to create a very big level, it is sometimes not possible for a level designer to sit manually and enter all those values or you know come up with these uh, manual testing methods. 
so sometimes uh, developers also aid uh, level designers by creating tools for them that they can use and put in uh, side the game and thereby come up with level designs very quickly uh, in fact uh, even on the unreal asset store you might uh, find a lot of plugins uh, i'm not aware of the plugins that uh, can be used to generate procedurally generated levels uh, because primarily on our end we come up with these levels uh, Uh, internally within the team, and whatever a bit of development that is required, we kind of get those models done in house. But certainly, you can rely on assets that are available on the asset store. Uh, there is also uh, that famous debate on whether or not you should actually rely on the asset store, buy assets, or create all assets by yourself. So I think the uh, primary answer to that is it depends on your requirement. Uh, because every single feature that you make. is going to end up costing you time effort and money right uh, so say for example if uh, you know you are the owner of a company and you want to make a level in 10 days for example so your uh, and you have a team of five people uh, out of that two are developers one is a level designer and two of them are artists so uh, the develop uh, artist will take two days to make the level uh then uh, the programmer will take maybe two days to incorporate any kind of functionality then once that is ready then it will be given to the level designer then the level designer will sit on the level and they will kind of start iterating the level and that will consume probably more than 10 days so at the same time if you identify that there are tools available directly on the asset store that will kind of help you speed up the process uh then by all means go ahead and do that because the cost that you will be spending on buying an asset versus getting that made in house uh, you might end up some bit of time and bandwidth on buying the game outright uh, buying the asset outright as opposed to getting it developed in house because at times what happens is we uh, when we make something in house we tend to refine that a lot and make a lot of changes which just adds more to the development time so it is wise to kind of have uh, uh, you know reliance on the asset store you might not find everything that you wish for but certainly you can pick up modules that will help you come up with these uh, level designs or come uh, you know aid you with tools that you can utilize uh, in making these uh, in house uh, you can also nowadays use artificial intelligence uh, to come up with new assets on the fly uh, and you know there's also this debate now what will happen to game developers or artists uh, due to the advent of uh, artificial intelligence which is again a separate topic altogether but i think i i would just like to briefly touch upon that part slightly because you know we are heading into that direction where uh, eventually artificial intelligence will actually be of great help to the entire development process i'm not using the word threat and i do not uh, believe that it is a threat in any uh, way whatsoever if anything it will just help us speed up the process at the end of the day game development is a uh, subjective process uh, so something that i like might uh, you might not like and vice versa so i believe that at the end of the day uh, the decision making will be of the humans themselves but ai tools can actually uh, significantly help you stress test and uh, also uh, come up with these uh, you know things on the fly so uh, earlier there was a huge craze about machine learning ml and uh, you know uh, procedural level designs what all of these things are helping us do is they are just helping us cut down on the development time so that we can spend less on the uh, on the nitty gritty parts and focus more on the vision and creativity uh, aspects so just to give, draw parallels on the same lines uh, what i mean to say is uh, 10 years later if you wanted to make a game uh, you did not have access to a lot of tools and thereby it used to take you uh, take anyone a lot of time long time to come with even a simple a simple game now because we have game engines out there uh, there are more game developers than ever before and that has just made the entire uh, system very democratized so i think going forward it is only going to be incrementally easier to make games and especially with having access to these tools anyone like and now literally anyone can come to the game idea and test it on the fly in fact i was also you know uh, hearing about a particular plugin which allows you to create an entire game just by giving instruction to the engine using chat gpt or something that is just very experimental i don't know the accuracy of it but you know we are heading in that direction wherein we will control the creative aspect and we can get everything done by the machine
So certainly level design is one of those key aspects where we require human involvement. Uh, so that is definitely something. Uh, my voice is not clear or some sort of a network issue. Is my voice not clear to any uh, even now? It's fine, Nikhil. I think it might be an issue on the other end. Okay. Uh, so those are my uh, few thoughts on you know the overall concept of uh, level design. I think uh, as I mentioned, I would love to uh, reserve some time for Q and A because I'm pretty sure the uh, uh, you know you guys might have some interesting questions. So I would open the floor for Q and A, and I hope whatever I spoke of uh, till now was helpful. So thank you all for listening to me, and uh, now I'll open it up for Q and A. Yes. it was great really interesting session and i am sure everybody learned a lot about it just before we jump into q and a i have one question from my end like we talked about level designing in game and development right so how is this important and first question is it important that any content that we create in xr should have level designing if yes then how learning and development content that we are seeing that, uh, nowadays How important it is for creators to focus on level designing when it comes to creating or gamifying learning experiences in this. Yeah, so as I said, right, level design is is very uh, important primarily because everything that you see is essentially a progression, right from your tutorial on how you guide the player to play your game, right to your uh, you know uh, core game mechanics. So, be it XR, be it VR, be it AR, I think the base principles remain the same. and certainly a strong level design actually guides the player and rewards the player so that it kind of you know uh, allows them to uh, play the game and enjoy the game even more um, better so this can be true for an educational game this can be true for a game that is a simulation game this will be true for a game that is purely for entertainment purposes uh, if you have a very strong level design you can onboard the user very well and that will essentially just help them uh, navigate the entire stage navigate the entire game and uh, you know connect to the game on a deeper level uh, that is that is the most important aspect so it does not matter what kind of game you are making it can be an xr game vr game ar game or a simple board game or a puzzle game or a racing game i think uh, having access to a strong level design is a fundamental uh, requirement of a game in making sure if it is fun to play or not a very poor level design will essentially drive away your player uh, because at the end of the day uh, games are a piece of a piece of entertainment and if you have the right set of hooks uh, and you understand where uh, the player is going to be entertained and where they are going to you know lose their interest then i think that's a great value add for the player uh, uh, both from a standpoint of uh, you know educational or uh, entertainment or even uh, simulation also. Okay. Okay. So now the floor is open. I think Neeraj has raised his hand. So Neeraj, over to you. Yeah, Neeraj. Can I help and ask? Neeraj, you are on mute. If you are speaking. In case you are having any device issues, you can also. Post your query in the chat box, and we can take it from there as well. Yeah, guys. Uh, like, if you want to answer any sort of questions, uh, need not be restricted only to level design. Happy to answer any broader questions around game development as well. Uh, because I think uh, you know, I can be a great value add. Uh, been in the space for more than a decade, so any questions that you might have about a game development space as such, please feel free to unmute yourself or even type it down in the chat. Yes, yeah. Abhimanyu, you're you're on. Yeah, hi, uh, hi Nikhil. So, uh, uh, my question is: uh, So, we are designing for an uh, application which is kind of more towards the learning end, and we yeah. have a specific target audience, let's say medical professionals. Yeah. So, it becomes some sort of a serious game which we are talking about, right? Yeah. So uh, when dealing with such a thing, how do I introduce uh, gamification within the content which uh, which is so serious and which needs so precision uh, at a uh, different levels uh, uh, during that procedure itself? And uh, in putting down that procedure itself uh, is a task when it comes to you know, taking that entire content to VR or you know to XR. 
correct so i think uh, when you are making a game of such uh, such a serious nature uh, it is very important for you to consult with those subject ex- experts so say for example if you are working on a game that deals with dental issues right uh, so you certainly need to have a talk with some dentists in the space so that you can get their opinion on how to portray it because if at all you from your side end up making something that is entertaining but not education uh, then it might be a huge risk for uh, for the audience that is uh, intended for your game so certainly involving subject experts in this uh, in a game of this nature is uh, a great value add because they will know certain stuff that you might not know uh so the second part is if you to even look at uh, you know, games on uh, in the nature of simulation category so what you are referring to also broadly falls under the simulation category where you are creating an experience a medical experience that simulates the environment of a medical uh, environment right? uh games if of this nature have been made in the past they have been provided as a walk through uh i think one of the classic examples from both from an entertainment and a serious point of view is this game called microsoft flight simulator uh which actually has a uh, proper real life models inside the game and the formulas of all the real life engines are actually incorporated in the game so uh, to answer your question very quickly uh, clearly if whatever type of game that you are making that is serious in nature and requires you to have that subject knowledge you need to involve uh, professionals uh, from that industry work closely together with them and take their opinion uh, to a kind of uh, further refine uh, but uh, that along with uh, you know uh, that is a fine line between a game design and a simulation experience sometimes you have to make sure that what you are making is the right uh, way to go and not entertaining and not deviating but if you are making it for the general audience then you can always you know take liberties and gamify uh, by staying true in the construct regardless if you plan to make something that is educational in nature you uh, have to consult with the subject experts of that uh, particular topic uh, i hope that answers your question uh, yeah thanks yeah. uh metaverse can you name the ai plugin for unreal engine which you were talking earlier so uh metaverse that plugin was not for unreal engine it was i believe for unity game engine and i do not have a recollection of what the plugin was uh, uh, actually so if at all i get uh, get reminded i'll pass it on to the engineer and team and they can communicate to you later is it okay if we use studio or 3d assets designed using ai so pratik absolutely yes uh, i believe whatever helps you expedite the process of development on your side you should absolutely go ahead with it and uh, you know if at all you need any kind of help from an artist perspective have someone who has a basic knowledge about uh, art and have the genera- uh, ai generate that art and have the person who who is an expert in art uh, kind of guide you can you brief some uh, can you give some brief on simulation games so yes i mean simulation games are uh, uh, an interesting mix between entertainment and reality so you know personally one of my favorite simulation games is game called you know simulator and i think uh, the developers of that game scs software they have done a very fine job in that particular game primarily because they've made it entertaining as well as education uh your truck simulator is essentially a game where you just drive a truck uh, and make deliveries from point a to point b but they have also introduced the aspect of business where you can uh, actually create garages uh you can have different types of uh, uh, trucks with you you can hire drivers and what not so i think personally uh, simulation games are a great way and escape for a person to uh, live a completely different life but it again depends on what kind of simulation game you are making if it is in the medical category certainly as i mentioned earlier talking on you need to take some sort of a uh feedback from actual medical professionals same goes with any sort of simulation that will be used for real life training uh so you know there are, there can be example of a mining uh area where you uh, require your uh staff to train how to mine right so if you are ending up making some sort of a uh, simulation for them so you need to re- uh, replicate those real life scenarios and you need to consult with a lot of people who have been there on ground So simulation games are interesting from a perspective of entertainment and reality but uh, if they are uh, you know training uh, used for training purposes then uh, certainly you need an expert opinion on uh, how to execute that So Dinesh Koshki says what do you look for when hiring someone to be a specific uh, to be specific a 3D artist or a level designer 
So for a level designer, we look at prior experience on what kind of level designs they've come up with. And these can, uh, if you are to look at a fresher level designer, then we look at uh, their understanding of what is it that they find interesting in the existing games that they've played. Uh, if it's a senior level designer that we're hiring, then we look at their legacy experience where we understand uh, from the work that they've delivered in the past and what kind of work they can deliver in the future. A great example can be uh, by you know uh, just giving them an example of uh, one of our own games uh, and asking them what can you do in the level design to make this experience much better. So we we'll get all sorts of uh, feedback from them saying that this might work, this might not work, etc. etc. And once they start talking, you will kind of understand uh, their perspective and their expertise level. So that's essentially we, what we look for in a level designer to see how effectively they understand uh, level design. Which game you felt the best UX and why? Uh, lots of games, I believe, uh, you know, it will be difficult to name a few, but still I'll take the call. I believe Clash Royale has a very good user experience. Uh, I guess uh, on PC, I would say Red Dead Redemption 2 has a very good user experience. Uh, then, uh, you know, games like God of War uh, have very good UX. Uh, on the uh, recent game side, there's this game called Vampire Survivors that I've been playing lately. That has a very good user experience that it has very good uh, UX. Uh, and why? Because uh, whenever I do talk about user experience, you get a combination of two things. One is progression and second is how it makes you feel at every step of the way. So if at all it is, uh, you know, rewarding you ample uh, amount of times, you feel good and there's a dopamine boost that you get from the game. And that's how you uh, kind of, you know, uh, stick to the game if you get a very good user experience. Will Gameon be working, uh, will Gameon work in developing games in Metaverse in the near future? So, so uh, that is something of an internal discussion uh, that we are discussing. Uh, nothing from uh, as of yet. Uh, uh, I would not uh, confirm nor deny as of now. We just uh, haven't reached a stage where we might uh, come into the metaverse in the near future. But uh, again, never say never. So, uh, uh, possibility is there. I uh, just not confirm the new things. For a start, a uh, basic game from where to start. So, Palak, I think the best way to get started is to first play a lot of games, understand what is it that makes them want to play. Uh, second part is you need to determine what is it that you want to do into the industry. So do you want to become a game programmer? Do you want to become a game artist? Do you want to become a game designer or a level designer? That is uh, up to you to decide. Once you decide that, then there are you know various different pathways. I'm sure we can dedicate an entire session to this. Uh, so happy to have that later on. Uh, but this is just a fairly basic crude idea. First, play a lot of games, and then figure out what is it that you want to do into the gaming industry, figure out a job role, and within that job role, start researching on how you can make it happen. So it can either be if you want to become a game programmer, then you need to know programming, C, C sharp, etc. For a game designer, you need to know how to create documents. Uh, for game art, you need to know certain software. So, you know, software like Photoshop, 3ds Max, Maya. Depends on what you want to do essentially. Your take on uh, Sumit Vardhan, uh, what are the practices to get mastery in level design? I think the best practice is to keep on practicing that. that I think it's an iterative uh, or a recursive answer that I'll give you. Uh, practice makes a man perfect. So I think that is the only advice that I'll give you. You will not be a perfect level design on day one. Uh, you will not be a perfect level designer even when you master level design. But uh, your understanding of level design will keep on increasing as in when you keep on creating levels. So one just uh, just one uh, answer to your question Smith, is keep on making levels, keep on uh, you know playing games and that's how you can become uh, or get mastery in level design just through pure practice. I mean I don't want to sugarcoat anything or I don't want to you know give you any false promises. It is just what it is. It is a a uh, long way to go and uh, we need to have all the patience in the world in order to make this happen. Uh, your take on opportunities that come with learning Unreal Engine. So, uh, I mean, it's a very exciting question for me to personally answer this because, uh, you know, we at Gamer Studios are actually actively looking at hiring uh, people who uh, know Unreal Engine. Uh, and I know a lot of studios in India uh, that are actually looking at hiring Unreal Engine programmers as well, programmers, level designers, even artists. 
so uh, i think from a job perspective definitely there are a lot of openings out there and uh, right now the demand is more than the supply so you know uh, like we at our scale we require more programmers in the market and there are very less number of people available out there who actually know unreal engine so if you master unreal engine today uh, be it in xr ar vr or even casual games i think you have a very good opportunity and i think national mm-hmm. is is doing all that they can in their might and power to make sure that you guys are exposed to all these sessions particularly sessions like these where we talk openly about level design which is very rare uh, uh, you know a rare, a rare kind of talk that you might not find at a lot of places so all these integrities are something that certainly uh, help and uh, as of now i would say there's endless some opportunities in the job sector for unreal engine uh, and developers uh, with that in mind i think uh, we have only the next 3 minutes so krishna i will leave it to you should we take some more questions or should we wind this up or how do we do this i think we can take this question uh, like in a post to our repetitive so this is an important question as well like when we talk about unreal engine So yeah. people have this uh, query that I'm not from the coding background, I'm not from the tech background. Yeah. So when we have Unreal Engine, we have blueprints in, instead of C plus plus. Yeah. So is it okay that if I master Unreal Engine with blueprints and not C plus plus, given that I'm not from the coding background, so will it be okay or will it uh, like uh, my skills won't be that valuable if I'm not a pro programmer or is that so? So I mean it uh, depends on project to project, but uh, certainly having experience in C plus plus is more valuable, and that's because when you create something in blueprint system, sometimes your solution might not be the most optimized. Uh, but when it comes to a level designer, if you know only C uh, only blueprint system, that is fine. In terms of a programmer, sometimes the company requirement is that you know they require optimized code. so uh, you cannot possibly do that in blueprints and there are many roadblocks that even uh, we in our development process have observed so it is okay to have a hybrid of both i mean it's not like your entire project needs to be 100% in c++ there can still be modules that uh, run independently in blueprint system but having a core experience of c++ will be 100% a valuable uh, add on to your uh, core experience and thereby a company would prefer a candidate having an experience in c++ over someone having just blueprint experience so uh, you know by i'm not saying that you will not have any demand for a blueprint programmer it's just that if you know c++ you will be in more demand and you will you will perhaps even get paid more as compared to someone who knows only blueprint system.